Has anyone, can anyone here remember seeing the first Jurassic Park movie in cinema? I'm about to make you feel very old um, because that movie came out in 1993. That is over 30 years ago now. And our next speaker has been working in the games industry for longer than dinosaurs have been stomping across the cinema screens. <laughs> so um, yes, you are, we have old people both in front and in the, uh, of the audience and in the audience. Um, but Neil here has uh, experience in game development from mobile to AAA and is now supporting developers all across Europe bringing their games to Xbox. Please welcome with a warm applause uh, Neil Holmes is Senior Partner Developer Manager at ID at Xbox. Hi. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, good afternoon everyone. Um, so this is my talk, How to Publish Your Game on Xbox. Uh, my name is Neil Holmes. Uh, yeah, I'm a Developer Partner Manager uh, for ID at Xbox at Microsoft, uh, where I help independent developers bring their games to our platforms on console, PC, and in the cloud. Um, yeah, I started my career as an independent developer in 1990, um, and I worked for about 26 years across the industry as a programmer, technical manager, producer across mobile, AAA, um, indie game development, all sorts of things. And then I joined Xbox about seven years ago. Um, so yeah, as it's easier um, every day, really, to get Godot games up and running on Xbox um, with titles like Cassette Beasts and Primal Light already having success on our platform, I thought it was a great time to come and talk to you about like what the process is for getting your games published on our platforms. Uh, so in my talk today, I'll give you a quick overview of our platform philosophy, um, what it is we kind of feel about game development and the kind of direction we're going in as a platform. I'll explain how independent developers uh, publishing works on Xbox, how you get started. I'll come with some, cover some of the dev tools and the dev environment you'll use. And I'll explain a little bit about the funding that we have available. And um, I'll also talk about the best ways to highlight your games on our platforms when you actually launch, kind of how the marketing side of things works. So, um, oh, and I'll also talk a little bit about how not to screw up your launch as well. <laughs> um, so I've got about 45 minutes of content, I think. Um, so hopefully there should be plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, but if there isn't, um, feel free to just come and talk to me. I'll be here all weekend. Uh, I'm the guy wearing the Xbox t-shirt. Um, so yeah, just come up, ask me anything. OK, so let's jump into our kind of vision for gaming and what it means uh, for you as a game creator. So our mission statement is play the games you want uh, with the people you want anywhere you want. Um, we really want to put the gamer at the center of their universe. Uh, we want to welcome more gamers to our platforms, and we want to offer more choice in the way people play games. Um, everything we're doing from the platforms we build to the tools and the services that we offer uh, is all built with this kind of inclusive, gamer-centric vision in mind. The key pillar of our vision, of course, is the traditional home console. Uh, we launched Xbox Series globally in November 2020, and we're really pleased with the positive feedback we've had from gamers. Uh, we focused on a, a seamless transition from the previous generation with full backwards compatibility, and we invested in things like cross-generational purchasing and uh, ways on improving games from previous generation, like our FPS Boost program, which kind of takes older titles and lets them run at like 60 or 120 frames a second. So we launched Xbox Series with a two-skew strategy. Um, we have the Xbox Series X, uh, which is focused on power and performance, um, and it's a kind of the core skew for core players. And then we have Xbox Series S, which brings value and performance to the mainstream market. And in addition to our consoles, we're also extremely focused on PC gaming. Uh, our PC uh, today is, is mainly about Game Pass and the Xbox app. But our game development kit, which I'll talk about a bit later, has been built to make it so it's super easy for you to build in a single environment and publish your game on Xbox and PC and in the cloud. Um, and yeah, we also obviously have Windows 11 with Game Bar and stuff like that, which we're super focused on as well. So as we look to make gaming more accessible, we're also investing heavily in the cloud both so that existing players can play where they want, but also so that creators can engage new larger audiences outside of the typical regions where consoles are sold. Xbox Cloud Gaming is included as part of our uh, Game Pass Ultimate subscription, and you can stream games from your own Xbox at home or entirely through the cloud through our dedicated Xbox blades that run in our Azure data centers. Um, since all the blades in the data centers are Xbox Series hardware, it means that users on low-spec PCs, mobile devices, even previous generation Xbox consoles can get to play the newer generation of games uh, in a way that they would not 
previously been able to do. And it also lets you play this content on a huge variety of platforms. So we've, today we support Android, iOS, Windows PC. It's available on Mac. Um, and it's also available on things like Chromebooks. And all the new Samsung TVs have Game Pass built in as well. Um, since launching in 2020, we've seen tremendous growth in cloud gaming. We've had more than 10 million unique users uh, play games through the cloud streaming service. And 60% of those cloud players have tried a game for the first time via streaming. So it's really helping with like discoverability and helping players find new games. OK, that's enough about our vision. Um, so I want to give you a bit of insight of what we do at Xbox um, and tell you how the publishing side works. And this is where our idea Xbox program comes in. The idea Xbox program enables independent developers like yourselves to self-publish digital content on our platform which includes Xbox One, Xbox Series, the Windows Store, and streaming via uh, Xbox Game Cloud. Um, and I need to put an asterisk next to digital games, um, uh, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, earlier this year at GDC, we announced the latest stats for the Idea Xbox program. So to date, we've had more than 3,000 games launched through Idea Xbox. Um, and we've been running the program now for 10 years. And we've paid out over $4 billion in royalties to creators through the program. Uh, we're really proud of the quality and the variety of content that comes through Idea Xbox. And that kind of creativity and experimentation that we see from independent developers is the thing that we love the most about working with them. Um, to add to those stats, um, we've also got more than 5,000 registered studios across the world uh, in over 100 countries. And there are more than 3,000 games that we know of in development at the moment through the program. More than 550 of the games that are published through Idea Xbox have also been in Game Pass. And um, there are more than 30 games that have released into Game Preview on console, which is our version of Early Access. Um, so if you're planning a game that's going to be like an Early Access experience, um, you should definitely talk to us, because we're the only console platform that has an Early Access program. Uh, and we're always interested to have new titles in that program. So yeah, as you can see, Idea Xbox is pretty big, um, and it continues to keep growing. So our top goal with the ID Xbox program is really to make shipping games on Xbox as simple as possible for independent developers. Uh, whether it's the process of getting the build up and running on the console, or working through the back-end setup, or just signing the contracts, ID Xbox is really just like a one-stop shop for everything you need to publish on Xbox. Uh, it's not just about publishing, though. We also do additional stuff. We have developer days throughout the year um, where we can gather players, uh, sorry, players, creators from various regions together and talk to you about the program, reveal new things that we're doing, um, give like top tips and like store information, things like that, what's selling, what's not, that kind of stuff. Um, and we also host online green room events uh, for partners that are under NDA where we can do like deep dives into different parts of the program and help explain how you can do things. Um, and ironically, for a program that's all about digital publishing, uh, we recently enabled retail disc publishing as well. So now you can do kind of like small run digital, uh, sorry, retail disc production as well through Idea, Expo, Idea Xbox. Uh, the retail program is still in a pilot phase, uh, but if it's something you're interested in, then you should talk to us. OK, so how do you sign up? Um, well, the good news is it's pretty simple. Um, you just need to register with us first. Um, that kind of gets the process going. And then you need to submit a game concept for each game that you want to publish. Um, this is reviewed by our team, um, uh, just to make sure it's suitable for publishing on console, uh, which sound, sounds kind of scary, but it's actually quite straightforward. Um, it's really a simple process. The only things we're really looking for are titles that maybe have like offensive content in them or something that's just not suitable for a console audience. Um, so once you've been approved, you then get access to all of our tools. You can download our GDK, and you can start development. And finally, when you're ready to publish, you go through certification um, to make sure you meet all the platform requirements, and then you just publish. Um, we have a dedicated support team that's available um, via email that you can talk to at all times for any stage of this process. And if you've got any problems or you know, questions at any stage, you can just always reach out to them. OK, so I'll go through the process in a little bit more detail so you just get a little bit more of an understanding. Um, as I already said, the first step is super easy. You just need to go to xbox.com forward slash publish. Um, and then you can register with the Idea Xbox program. Um, there are a few programs here that you can choose from. There's Idea Xbox. There's also something called the Creators Program. And there's also Idea Azure. Um, I'll talk more about Idea Azure in a bit. Um, but the one you want is Idea Xbox. The Creators Program is really for like hobbyist developers or students. Uh, we're not really looking to publish properly into the store. Um, 
it's 100% free to sign up, um, and you can register at any stage in your development. You don't have to be like ready to publish to register. I would suggest register as soon as you can. Uh, once you've signed up, you'll be asked to like uh, sign an NDA, um, which is just the standard Microsoft NDA, and then you'll be asked to submit a concept form. Um, it looks kind of complicated, but it's pretty simple. Um, it just helps us get an understanding of your game, um, so we can decide whether to approve it or not. Um, some tips for how to fill this stuff in. So when you submit, we generally just need to see something that's polished and relatively far along in development. If our team can't play your game, it's likely they'll ask you to resubmit later when there is something playable. Um, but yeah, when you do submit, a few things to bear in mind. Um, we're going to need to know kind of roughly your release dates. Um, it's not set in stone. You can change it later. But we just kind of want a rough idea when you're planning to come out. Uh, we will need a gameplay video. Um, Obviously, we'll try and play every game that comes through, but you know, there's only so many hours in the day, so like having a gameplay video that shows us all the best bits of your game is super useful. Uh, we will want to see a playable build. You can send us like Steam keys, or you can send us a, an executable to download, whatever you want to do. That's fine. And um, yeah, even if you're not at that stage, you can submit, but it'll just be a bit harder to get approval. So like, it, yeah, it kind of depends on like previous experience. If you publish previous titles, you might be more likely to get approved earlier on that kind of stuff. OK, um, when you do apply, you should also tell us as much about your team as possible as well. Um, like, who are you? Where are you based? What previous experience do you have? Um, it's useful for us to be able to understand what drives you as a team, uh, what are you passionate about, why are you building this particular game. Uh, it's all stuff that will be useful for our reviewers to understand, but also it's useful if, as we work with you further on down the pipeline, we want to start highlighting games and like doing marketing stuff with you and things like that. Um, and all of this information just lets our team get a better understanding of your needs and goals and you know, helps make the process much smoother. And then, yeah, also please yeah, remember to tell us about your game. <laughs> Even with a video and a playable build, we're still only going to be scratching the surface. So make sure you tell us all the cool stuff that's going to be in your game. Like all of our team are avid gamers, so really try and sell us on like why they should be wanting to play your game. Uh, and finally, we need to know a little bit about your budget and timescales as well, especially if you're going to be looking for funding from us. Um, we'll need to know about your business model. Is it a free-to-play game? Is it premium? Will you have DLC? What's your post-game uh, like release plan look like, post-launch release plan look like? Um, and we'll also want to know like what other platforms you're launching on and when you'll be launching on those as well. And um, yeah, if you're going to be supporting like cross-play, cross-progression, things like that, please let us know. You don't need special permission from us to do that stuff. We just really like to know about it. We love to support games that do that. Um, there's also some technical stuff we can talk about as well. OK, then once you've submitted your GIF and it's been approved, or your game information form, uh, the next part is really straightforward. Um, you'll have to sign basically the agreement, the publishing agreement for the game, and a little uh, agreement for the development kit. Um, and then you get access to everything. So you'll get the idea Xbox Developer Hub, which is like a dedicated space where you can um, find out like how processes work. There's how-tos and getting started guides and stuff there. You'll get access to the GDK download site where you can download the Xbox version of our GDK. Um, and then there's things like Payment Central where we handle like paying you royalties. You'll get access to the Xbox Developer Forums. These are the same forums that everybody gets, everyone from like EA and Ubisoft down to kind of one guy working in his bedroom. It's the same support process for everybody. And you'll get access to Microsoft Partner Center. And we'll give you a token. There's like a $90 fee or something to sign up for Partner Center. We'll give you a token to waive that. And Partner Center is basically the back end where you set up your game and you do all of your uploading for builds and things like that. Um, and then at the same time, we'll also send you two free Xbox One dev kits. So they're the previous generation kits at the moment. Um, so if you want the current generation kits, there's a small fee to license those from us. Um, but you'll get the two free ones anyway. So you can get started. And that's it. Uh, I blurred out a bunch of this stuff because it's kind of, some of it is a bit NDA-ish. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so now all you need to do really is make the game. Um, you'll need to do some setup, obviously, in our back-end product stuff. You'll need to integrate Xbox Live sign-in and set up achievements and things like that. But that's all kind of the fun stuff. And if you're publishing on any other store, it's pretty much the same things you'll be doing for those other stores as well. Um, and then once you've done all of this stuff and the game's ready to go, you then submit to CERT. Um, So the final part is certification. It sounds really scary, uh, but it's really not. Um, all the console platforms have something similar to this, where basically you just have like a bunch of requirements you need to meet to, to meet the minimum quality on the platform. Um, 
Good news is certifications are way simpler today than it used to be. Uh, there used to be like hundreds of XRs you had to meet, and now it's, there's a much smaller list of things. Um, the other bit of good news is that we now publish publicly all of our XRs, not just for PC, but for console as well. So you can go to the website, the link's a bit terrible, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but if you just search like um, Xbox XRs, it'll take you there, and you can see every single test case that we will run your game through on the platform. There are pass and fail examples for every single one of them. Um, yeah, and there's deep dives into how to implement things to meet all of those things. And it's going to be things like you know handling sign in correctly, handling suspend and resume, uh, handling it when um, you know the console loses connectivity to the internet. Just things like that that need to be solid for a console experience. Um, and then the main bulk of it is going to be stuff around things like parental controls and security. Um, but yeah. Um, Cool. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the development environment. So, obviously, we offer quite a huge range of tools that can help you make games today. Um, everything from cloud infrastructure to physics to art tools and stuff like Visual Studio and GitHub. You're probably already using at least one tool that Microsoft provides for game development. Um, but we also offer something called the GDK. And the GDK is our game development kit for Xbox, for Windows PC, and for the cloud. Um, so, obviously, our ecosystem is made up of Xbox One, Xbox Series, the Windows Store, and Cloud. The GDK is the same across all of those. So, you only have to write sign in once, you only have to write achievements once, and then you can just export to each of those endpoints. Um, it's really straightforward. Um, most of the development work is done on Windows. Um, if you want to target Xbox, obviously, you'll need those dev kits. You can't use a retail kit to do development. Um, but, yeah, like I said before, we'll give you two of those free of charge. Um, and again, good news is most of the GDK is now public as well. There's a couple of like super secret Xboxy bits which are still not. Uh, but if you go to aka ms4 slash GDK, the entire API is there and it's all available to download from GitHub as well. Um, some other things we offer, if you're building a multiplayer game on Xbox, then um, PlayFab is kind of the, the solution we use for peer-to-peer -peer networking on Xbox. Um, it's also completely platform agnostic. Um, it's secure, fast, reliable. We recommend it if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer networking. Um, but the cool thing is, uh, yeah, it also runs on PlayStation and Switch and Mac and Linux and iOS and Android. So if you're planning to do a cross-network game, it's a great solution if you're looking for something in that area. Um, it also provides metrics and things like live ops as well if you're doing that sort of game. Um, so yeah, talk to us if that's something of interest to you. Um, the reason the Idea Azure logo is there as IDEA Azure is a sister program to IDEA Xbox. Um, it can help directly with the cost of running kind of like back-end systems, hosting multiplayer games, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's free to sign up, just like IDEA Xbox. It'll automatically give you, I think, about $5,000 worth of Azure credits. It might be more than that now, I can't remember. Um, and it'll also give you things like play, uh, free PlayFive Party multiplayer across all the various different platforms. Um, and they also offer things for like handling like distributed development, uh, make it easier for remote team members to distribute code, assets, that kind of stuff. Um, and then there are also other things that we offer through Idea Azure, like uh, real-time translations and things like that. So if you're making a multiplayer game, you can have it so that everyone in the game can talk to each other in different languages. So we'll do like real-time translation from speech to text, translate, and then back into a different language. So I can be speaking in English, someone else can hear me in Chinese, that kind of stuff. So there's some really cool stuff available through this. So I highly recommend you check it out. And uh, yeah, we keep adding more to it all the time. OK, um, and I wanted to briefly talk about what it means to develop for Xbox Cloud Gaming. We often get questions about how much work is required to develop and release cloud versions of games. Um, and the good news is uh, there is zero work required. Um, so our cloud infrastructure basically just runs the Xbox build of your game. So if you publish on Xbox, the game will just work through cloud streaming. There is optional stuff you can do. Um, so by default, we just put a, like, a touchscreen overlay up for devices that don't have physical controls. Um, and that will just have like every button from the controller on it, which is kind of cumbersome. You can build your own custom overlays and publish them for your game to make that better. And you can also put stuff into the game as well. So you can detect things like, what is the physical size of the screen I'm on? Or like, does this Xbox have a touch screen? Um, and then you can use that information to make changes to your game at runtime. 
Um, so you can do things like scale the text to make it more readable on a small display, or you can implement stuff like pinch to zoom on your map screen or whatever you want to do. Um, but that stuff's all optional. Um, by default, it will just work. Um, yeah. OK, uh, so now you know how to sign up and how the process works. What else can we help you with? Um, OK, so talk a bit about Game Pass. So hopefully everyone's heard about Game Pass, probably. Um, so it's our subscription service. Um, it offers access to hundreds of games for a, a great monthly price. Um, and thanks to Game Pass, our players get um, more value um, from gaming, and they get a very easy way to try new games and new experiences. Uh, game Pass is a curated catalog. So if you want your game to be considered for Game Pass, uh, you need to apply um, through your picture game to idea Xbox process. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in a bit. But yeah, there's basically a button you can click to say, hey, I, please consider my game for Game Pass. Um, the reason we love Game Pass is, and the reason we think it's really succeeding is that it really helps create value both for its millions of members but also for our partners as well. Um, Xbox players told us they wanted to get more value from gaming. Um, and they wanted an easy way to discover, try, and experience more games. And they wanted a high-quality gaming environment that was kind of easy to share with their friends and participate in com communities uh, with titles large and small. And for partners, what is important is it's the same three elements, really, value, discovery, and community. And they also make sense for partners. So Game Pass provides another way to drive value and help our partners make money. Uh, but by providing a large audience uh, who want to try new things, we can introduce millions of players to new experiences, new genres, new games, new developers, new franchises. Um, having a vibrant community of players engaging with and talking about your game is critical to building awareness, engagement, and re-engagement. Uh, and the audience mechanisms we've built into Game Pass uh, are a catalyst for building healthy, vibrant communities. Uh, and being in Game Pass can really help drive your sales on other platforms as well, just purely based on the amount of noise that basically Game Pass inclusion generates. We see sales going up across all the platforms, not just on ours. So, one sec. Uh, yeah, and we have some numbers to back this up. So Game Pass subscribers play 40% more games across 30% more genres than they did before joining Game Pass. Um, and that includes titles outside of the catalog as well. It's not like they just become Game Pass only players. Uh, and members are willing to invest in their experience. On average, they spend more money than non-Game Pass members as well. Uh, they purchase games inside and outside of what's available in the library. And they also purchase additional content for games that they are enjoying within the library. On average, across the Game Pass library, uh, partners who put their games into there see more than an eight times increase in engagement when they join Game Pass. I say Game Pass also builds strong communities. Um, Game Pass Ultimate members have three times the number of social connections on Xbox compared to non-members. They're also four times more likely to stream, uh, which accelerates word of mouth and momentum for games. OK, um, another thing I want to talk about, the Developer Acceleration Program. So we announced this at GDC this year. Um, and this is a new program aimed at uh, empowering underrepresented creators. Um, so we're looking for kind of creativity, innovation, and originality um, from kind of emerging developers. So maybe places where um, developers are looking for investment to release on multiple platforms, um, or they have other kind of like priorities in the, what they're building. Um, but yeah, the developer, sorry, the developer acceleration program is a non-recoupable funding. Um, with, which will help you bring your game to Xbox, basically. It helps with the porting cost. doesn't require any exclusivity or company equity. Um, offers will be unique to each developer, um, and they take into account developers' needs and experience. The type of developers we're seeking um, to support include, but are not limited to, developers who are led by women, um, developers who are comprised of kind of diverse ethnicities, um, LGBTQIA developers, uh, communities uh, or developers with disabilities, developers from emerging markets. Um, basically, we're looking to diversify the, the developer pool on Xbox. Um, so it's not just limited to kind of what your background is as a developer either. If you're building a game that touches on any of those topics, we'd also be interested in talking to you. We're really just about trying to celebrate diverse, uh, diversity and really kind of promote those sorts of titles on our platforms. Um, yeah, if you think. Even if you think you might only vaguely fit into this category, it's worth reaching out to us and discussing whether there is a potential fit there. 
So yeah, qualifying developers gain access to information about best practices in the form of monthly webinars called Green Room events um, that co cover topics like life cycle, marketing tips, certification prep, things like that. Um, and yeah, many underrepresented developers have historically lacked access to the resources and networks to get their ideas off the ground, especially kind of in emerging markets. Um, so we're also going to be um, providing funding for prototyping as well. Um, so if you've got an idea that you think might fit into this, but you're not sure like you've got the funding in place to actually start building it, also come and talk to us. Um, yeah, so we've been doing this kind of behind the scenes for a few years. Um, there's been about 100 titles that have been through this process already, but we only really started talking about it publicly this year. It was something that we were kind of doing because we thought it was cool to do, but it has been so successful that yeah, we decided we'd, we'd make a, a proper program out of it and uh, start talking about it a bit more. Okay, so how do you apply? Um, so similar to you submitting a GIF, there is a, a little button on the website you can go to. Um, once you're signed up and you're under NDA, you'll be able to come here and you'll be able to click on a button to pitch your game. So if you're interested in the developer acceleration program or you want to be part of Game Pass, this is the place to start. So there's a simple form to fill in, it sends it off to us, and then there's a whole team on the back end that will go through that. Uh, and it, yeah, decide whether your game can be included or not. Okay, uh, next I wanted to talk a little bit about marketing support. Um, our store is where you need to grab the attention of players. Uh, we have a dedicated store team to help advise on setting up pre-orders, uh, player incentives, release timing, and discounting. Um, and there's also a monthly newsletter where you'll get information about upcoming ID-themed sales and events, so you can ask to be part of them. Um, the way this kind of works on our platform is obviously we have a lot of titles coming through and we're a relatively small team that support this stuff. So we very much rely on developers asking us to be included in things. It's not something where we're going to reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to be included? We'll try and put the information out there about what's happening. Then it's up to you to reach out to us to ask. Um, I would say never be shy about asking for stuff. The people who ask for the most stuff are the people who get the most stuff. Um, so we also have additional editorial dedicated to Idea Xbox in the store. Um, this refreshes every couple of weeks. Uh, rather than simply focusing on like new releases, this is like a curated section where we talk about things that are particularly cool or unique or titles we personally love. Uh, or ones where we want to see more engagement. Maybe we think it's a cool game, but it's not really been getting much uptake. We'll, we'll promote them here. Um, we also have a dedicated emerging creators game collection in the store, and this is for developers who are part of the developer acceleration program. And we also run articles uh, written by yourselves on places like the Xbox blog, uh, which we call Xbox Wire. Um, the games media frequently picks up stories from here. Um, they check here for announcements, so anything posted here has a great chance of being picked up by the major press outlets. So yeah, if you've got an interesting story about your game or you want to talk about how the development of your game went, write a blog post, send it to us, we'll publish it, it'll get picked up. It's a really cool way of getting like exposure for your title. And again, we can't keep track of like your marketing plans, so make sure you reach out to us. And if it's like something where like, hey, in two weeks, I would love to get some marketing support around my game, make sure you reach out to us a couple of weeks before that to, to let us know <laughs> so we can schedule it in. Uh, we also have a fantastic community team. Um, they stream and tweet about your games on our Idea Xbox channels. Uh, this content is also carried by uh, the Xbox social channels as well as Xbox Wire and the Xbox Game Pass channels. Uh, so it gets great visibility. Uh, if you're making an announcement and would like a retweet, you can also just reach out to us. There's actually like a form where you just go fill it in and say, hey, I'm tweeting this thing, please retweet me. Uh, and we'll do that for you. Uh, and yeah, if you're rolling out a trailer as part of your update, or you know you want us to post about it on our Idea Xbox channels, you can again ask us to do that. You just need to provide us with the video with the uh, Xbox idents on the start and end. Um, all that stuff's available through kind of our, our website, so you can download it. You can put the idents on, send it to us. Again, let us know a couple of weeks in advance when you want it to be done, and we'll make sure we post it up on our channels the same day it goes live on your own channels. Um, again, yeah. Um, the whole kind of like tell us in advance thing is super important. Like if you post it up on your channel and then ask us like the next day, we're not going to carry it because it's, it's old news by that point. So yeah. Uh, and we have a regular show on Twitch as well. It runs every Wednesday, focuses on new releases that week. Um, and twice a year we run the Idea Xbox Showcase events with Twitch, which are like three hour streaming events where we go through promoting new titles that are going to be coming up. 
And again, if you want to be involved in these, make sure you reach out to us. The information about when they're happening will be in the newsletter. So yeah, just ask. Um, and the newsletter is also the same place where you'll get informed about things like our GDC events, stuff that's happening, well, what was E3, but whatever it's called now. Um, those events as well. If you want to be included, that's, that's literally open to everybody. Every year we sit down and we literally watch hundreds and hundreds of videos of games that want to be part of those things, and we pick out the best ones. It's really open to everybody. There's no kind of like limit on like how small or how large the studio needs to be to be involved in those things. So yeah, again, don't be shy about asking. Um, and yeah, finally we have what we call our summer game. Sorry, that's the mouthful. Our summer Game Fest demo event, uh, where we publish around 50 demos of idea Xbox games to the stores. So um, I guess it's a little bit like Steam Next Fest, similar kind of idea. Um, if you want to be involved with this, again, we'll let people know in advance in the newsletter that we send out or every idea Xbox developer. Um, and yeah, reach out. And it's another great way of getting visibility for your game ahead of launch. Cool. One other thing I wanted to really highlight was. Um, the stuff we're doing with accessibility on Xbox. Uh, we really care about uh, gaming accessibility for everybody. Um, and not only should you feel good about making your game more accessible, but sharing your game's accessibility features will also help you stand out in the store. So there are particular ways you can search in the store for games that have accessibility features. Um, so if this is something you're planning to do, uh, make sure you fill in all the right bits in our back end, set, tell us what all of your accessibility features are, and then you'll show up in all the right places in the store. Uh, one other thing we offer is we have, um, when you come through certification, there is an optional accessibility certification you can do as well, where we will actually test your game and provide you with, it's like a 50 or 60 page report, where it will go through and break down every single part of your game and explain where we think there are accessibility problems, where you can improve things, everything from font sizes to the way the camera movement shakes to like, are people going to get motion sick from your game? It's really, really cool thing. So again, if that's something that you're passionate about, make sure you ask us about it. Okay, so how not to screw up your launch. So this is based on like you know honest experience from what other developers have done wrong and continue to do wrong. Um, so yeah, this is going to be like a top ten ways to not screw up. Okay, number ten uh, is pricing. Um, so in reality, not that many people really compare prices between platforms. Uh, but if people notice that your price is way out of whack on another platform, you'll probably get review bombed around it. So um, yeah, something to bear in mind. Um, if you really do need to differentiate pricing for some reason, like just make sure you explain it really clearly why in the product description. Like if it's like a special edition version of your game on it's on Xbox and it's using like 4K assets and you've tuned everything to the nth degree to make it so much better than the mobile experience, make sure that's clear so people can understand why the pricing is different. Um, yep. Next, number nine. Poor translation of metadata. Um, yeah, don't do, don't machine translate your metadata. <laughs> like find somebody to actually do it, a real human. Make sure people check it for you. Get your community to check it for you. Like this is like the, the worst thing you can do. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it says it already. <laughs> Uh, okay, number eight. Now, this is seemingly pretty obvious, kind of like marketing 101. It's amazing how many people use throwaway marketing copy. At the very least, the copy you use for your game should be professionally written and tell the consumer what kind of game it is. Um, I see so many where they like to go into like really massive detail about what the backstory is, for the, but don't actually explain what the game experience is going to be like when you actually play it. Um, yeah, so ideally, it should describe what's special about your game, not just kind of the setting and kind of side of things. Um, yep, super important. Trailers. Um, trailers are really important for your product page. Still see people launching today where they just don't have a trailer on their product page. So you go to the product page, just a wall of text and a couple of static screenshots. Um, yeah, make sure you build a trailer and put it on your thing. Um, the other thing I would say is um, don't use live action. Like it's universally hated. Like so many developers still keep trying to do it. Um, it doesn't work. People want to see what your game looks like. Um, another top tip is in the TikTok era that we're in. Like nobody wants to sit through your logos at the start. You might be super proud of your company logo. Put them at the end. Like just go straight into gameplay. Nobody don't want you 30 seconds of nicely fading in and out logos. Um, <laughs> just get straight to the gameplay. Um, yep. Number six. 
release in every region that you can. Um, the localization barrier to entry is actually really low. Um, you only need to localize the metadata uh, in the store to get, and get an appropriate age rating for each region to launch into those regions. You don't need to translate your game into every region. Your game could just be English, but you could still launch in like 70 territories as long as you translate your metadata. Um, that said, if you can localize your game into lots of different languages for each region, um, it's always better to do that. Like the local Microsoft marketing teams will support you in those regions. If they see a game that has language for their particular territory, they will support it. Um, these days, IR ra IARC ratings are free um, for almost every region. I think South Korea is probably like the only one where you still have to pay for. Um, so yeah, it's super easy to get ratings. It's all self-service these days. Um, so yeah, just make sure you hit as many territories as possible. And if you want to be in Game Pass, that's also super useful um, because like Game Pass is worldwide. So we want games that are going to be able to launch into every territory. So we don't have to explain to people it's in Game Pass now, apart from in these like four regions for some reason. Um, yep. Okay, number five. Um, so other platforms might tell you different things uh, to this, and you know, they probably have the data to say it works on their platforms, but. Honestly, like day one discounts don't work as far as we're concerned. Um, they don't move the needle. I mean, I've seen some of the data. You have to go like really deep on a discount to actually get more people to buy your game day one. Um, and it doesn't make up for the loss of revenue that you'll get. The best thing to do day one is have something to bundle with your game. The people who are buying your game day one are the ones who are most excited about playing your game. They're probably going to be excited about buying additional stuff for your game as well. Have a deluxe edition. Have something else that those players can buy to. Have a value add. That said, um, if you're launching on our platform at the same time as everyone else and you are doing a discount on everyone else's platform, then yeah, you probably need to do it on ours as well, otherwise Xbox players will complain about why it's cheaper on other ones. Uh, but yeah, this is just some advice from us. Uh, so number four, um, you need to plan your discounts like a year in advance, <laughs> like have a post-release plan for what you're going to do. Like know when you're launching, know when you're going to be doing your first discount, know when you're going to be doing your first DLC, when you want to like, yeah, have that plan and talk to us early. Make sure you talk to us. Um, yeah, you can do a discount on our platform at any time. You can just change the price and you'll get like a strike through pricing, but nobody's going to see that unless they go and search for your game in the store or they already have you in a wish list. Like, if you want to be in sales and things like that, you need to talk to us in advance and plan it. Okay, almost done. Um, yeah, don't crash land into your launch. This is really easy for me to say, um, but you probably want to be through certification on consoles about two months before you actually want to launch. So there's a bunch of stuff that we won't let you do until you've passed cert. So you can't put up a pre-order until you've passed certification because we won't take money from somebody to buy your game until we know it will actually release on that date. And we won't let you release unless you pass certification. So it's a bit kind of, you have to be through that. So really what you want to do is you want to plan for kind of six to eight weeks at the end. Like I'm done, I've submitted to cert, I've passed cert, I've now got a six to eight week runway between like my game can be up for pre-order in the store, I can start all my marketing activities, I can start sending out review codes, I can, I can do all of that stuff. That's what you want to be thinking about. Um, it's super it's super convenient on something like Steam to be able to like put your game up and then okay my game's finished and 15 minutes later click the go live button and yeah I'm live um, but really like you only get one chance to launch you want to make sure you're maximizing it and the other thing I would say is we would always say launch on as many platforms as you can at the same time it's always the best way to drive excitement and interest in your game um, so yeah, if you can do it, launch on all the platforms on the same day. Um, if you're talking to the press or you're trying to get like people to do reviews of your title, it's always much harder to get them to do that a second time. Like if the game's already launched on Steam and then you're coming to console six months later, trying to get console reviewers to review your game, super hard. I mean, if you launch on Steam and the game's hugely successful, everyone will be falling over themselves to do reviews and coverage when it comes to console. But if it's come out on Steam and it's done okay, then the press are probably going to look for something more interesting to cover that week. So yeah, having, having a, a day one launch across all of your platforms and making sure you have that launch plan locked so that you can have all of your platforms launch at the same time. Super important. Um, yeah, marketing efficiently is another one. Um, I can't remember where I got this slide from. But um, 
Yeah, there's kind of like two ways of looking at this. Um, there's like so the left-hand one is like stuff that's really easy at the bottom, stuff that's really hard at the top, and then on the other side, inefficient at the bottom and efficient at the top. Um, it's great to think about going to places like GDC and E3 and stuff like that, but it's actually super expensive to go to those events, and you don't necessarily get that much traffic. Like, really think about where you're spending your money. Um, like, yeah. Hopefully it's relatively... I'm not a marketing person. <laughs> but hopefully this is relatively self-explanatory. Um, in our experience, this is kind of how it works. Um, it's interesting as well when we look at social media as well. Like, not all social media appears to be equal. Um, we've seen people have great success with marketing on Twitter, having great engagement from that. And then, equally, we've seen people like on Instagram or TikTok have huge engagement, but then have not very much sell through from it. So it's not only like about the reach; it's about the people you're reaching. You want to make sure you're targeting gamers who are actually going to go and play your game. Okay, number one. It's the box art. Um, this is a bit of a kind of like duh bit of information, but it's so important, right? When develop well, when a developer, when a, a consumer is sat on their sofa, ten foot away from their screen, your box art is going to look very different to what it looks like in a darkened office, like three inches from your face, when where you probably made it, right? Um, Go and test your box art. Sit on a sofa 10 foot away from a normal sized TV and like, does my game stand out? Um, if you can't pick your box out from an image like this, then it's not working for you. You need to rethink it. And yeah, just to repeat that, it really is super important. Cluttered, busy box art doesn't work. Complex, artsy stuff doesn't work. Um, stuff with just logos on doesn't really work. It needs to tell the player a bit about what your game is just from that one image. And the other thing is, like, sexy, exploitative, clickbait stuff doesn't work either. You'll get loads of clicks, but they'll be from the wrong kind of people. They won't actually buy your game. <laughs> um, yeah, so test it. I mean, these ones are good examples. Um, each of these things kind of gives you a little bit of an insight into what the game is about. You can immediately kind of get a flavor of it just by looking at that box art. They're really, really good. I mean, the Ark one especially, it's like, oh, cool. So this game's kind of sci-fi-y, but with dinosaurs, and I get to shoot things. And like, it, yeah, it just looks cool just from the box art, right? That's kind of what your box art needs to be doing for you. And that's it. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? We got a microphone. If you do have questions, yes, I will come to you and give cool. you the microphone. Actually, I'm just going to put this next slide up. Um, so yeah, um, these are all our contact details and stuff. So if you want to talk to us, um, these are the different places you can reach out to us. Sorry. Yeah, hi. So you were um, you mentioned that a better way to drive sales on launch day rather than giving a discount was to add content to the purchase. Now. Um, is that in terms of uh, DRM of bundling uh, downloadable content, or do you um, or do players react well to things like bundling art books or soundtracks as well? Yes, uh, but also sort of no. Um, <laughs> yes, it does really work. Um, honestly, the problem right now is there's not a good way of delivering that content on console. Um, that's something I'm personally trying to sort out for for us at the moment, but. Um, you would need to build your own like companion app or something, or build that stuff into the game. So it's additional work. Like if you do it on Steam, you can just bundle a PDF and it'll work, right? But if you're doing like PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, there is more work to be involved in that. Um, just bear that in mind. But yeah, it does work. So you can do like a digital deluxe edition, have a soundtrack, have an art book. But then it's not quite the same value it is on something like Steam if you can only listen to the music in the game anyway. Um, so yeah, just think about that. I've seen people do things like have a QR code in the game for the digital deluxe that takes you to a site where you can download the MP3s, that kind of stuff. Um, we don't really have any restrictions about how you do it, but just bear in mind that at the moment, console is going to be extra work. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question of the most importance about the game information uh, mm -hmm. form. Is it spelled GIF or GIF? <laughs> it's, it's GIF because it's game, like GIF for graphics, he says controversially. 
<laughs> Sorry. Hi. For Hi. the for the game preview, do you need to yep. be exclusive no. or you can be early access as well? Yeah, you can be early access anywhere else. Um, like, there's no real exclusivity in any of this stuff. Um, like we like so we encourage you to be on as many platforms as you can. Like you, your biggest opportunity is to be on Steam in early access and also with us because that will drive more interest in your game. Yeah. Hi, um, launch discounts. Yeah. Uh, my impression was uh, regarding uh, to Steam that mm -hmm. you, that usually on Steam you would want to have a launch discount because you uh, really want to push how much you can convert initially. Yep. So you kind of uh, make the algorithm happy, so you get a little bit more promotion. Is this yeah. different for Xbox? Yeah, like our numbers don't show that it drives more sales, like. I've not seen the numbers myself, but like our marketing team always have this message that like the discount won't increase your day one sales. We haven't seen any, we haven't seen any proof to back that up. Now I did put the caveat in there that like that's not true on every platform. If you're doing a discount on Steam, like everybody does a discount on Steam, right? It probably does work for that platform. We just know it doesn't work for ours. So if you were just doing us, our advice would be to do the value add, do do a day one digital edition or something like that. You will drive more revenue that way. Yeah, you're basically giving money away on Xbox if you do a discount. <laughs> yeah, discounts later on do work. You can totally drive sales later on by going into like sales and, and having like additional discounts later on. Uh, sorry, and you will not be uh, audible on oh, the yeah, recording. Sorry. So yeah, the other um, and for follow-up questions, I would suggest you grab uh, uh, Neil yeah. afterwards because we Again. have two more questions logged in, and then we barely have time for a third one. Okay. Um, and I already see a hand going up, so you will get the last question. Yeah, do you also um, handle publishing of physical copies, or is it just digital only? So we have a, a program I mentioned where we can do uh, physical copies as well now. It's still in like a, a preview at the moment, so we're just working with a few small developers, but it's something we do want to do. Um, often developers will work with a publishing partner to do their physical distribution. So there's nothing stopping you self-publishing the digital version and then working with an existing boxed retailer to do retail distribution. Um, that happens all the time. And again, there's another thing worth mentioning. You can sign up for the Idea Xbox Pro and, and plan to be self-publishing, but if you get further on down the line and you decide that actually you want a publisher to come on board to help with marketing and things like that, or retail distribution, that's absolutely fine. People drop in and out of the program all the time. So, yep. Yep. Uh, hi. Um, two quick questions about uh, Game Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, you said uh, there's a certification. Uh, do you have to know when you are giving the GIF uh, if you want also to be on Game Pass, or is it like uh, a different... Uh, it's a separate thing. So, yeah, when you put your game information form in, it's just about your game um, and getting onto the platform. And then there's that separate process, that pitch your game to ID, which you can go through if you want to be considered for inclusion in Game Pass. So Game Pass will often look for games to launch what we call day and date. So they'll go into the program at the same time that you launch. Um, but we'll also be looking for catalog titles as well. So every month there's like 15 or 20 games going to Game Pass. There's not always 15 or 20 new titles every month. So yeah, even if post-launch, if you decide you want to go into Game Pass to like drive sales later on, that's worthwhile reaching out to us. Uh, and the second question, um, I don't know if it's secret, the basis for paying uh, for the Game Pass to developers, like is it based on a gameplay time uh, Sign for the month? to Idea Xbox and come and talk to us. <laughs> Okay, last question, and if anyone else has more questions, uh, I'm sure you can find Neil afterwards. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you, Neil, first of all, for yeah, uh, no this sound and well-articulated presentation. Uh, quite seductive, I would add. Um, I have actually two questions, short question. The first one mm -hmm. is, um, what would be the typical uh, time frame for a publisher, small publisher or independent publisher, the ones you are addressing here, uh, to go through that process from registration until launch? And if there is no typical, because it varies on the game, what would be the minimal time yep. frame which one has to basically foresee okay. in order to go through this whole process 
search and all the, the different yep. evaluations that you, that you go through. And the second question is, if I may add, is sure. uh, uh, could you a little bit elaborate on the, on the revenue model? What is the split between Microsoft and the publisher? Is this negotiable? How does it work? We know that for Apple stores and, my, and the Google stores, it's like 30%. Uh, is this something which uh, Microsoft, uh, is this varies depending on the, the, the title? How does that work? If you can talk about it, of yeah. course. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the first part, um, time frame. So it takes about 35 days, I think, is the time scale at the moment from applying to getting approval. I think that's about where we're at. It varies depending on what time of the year it is. Just there are more games at certain times of the year, kind of thing. Um, it probably takes a couple of weeks for like dev kits to be shipped out. After that, um, it can take a little bit longer depending on where in the world you are. Um, but yeah, it's usually a couple of weeks. Um, the actual dev part of it, I can't really answer that. Like, if you're just doing the bare minimum, kind of like say bare minimum, but like you're integrating Xbox Live sign-in, you've got to do achievements, you've got to implement cloud save, and then you just got to get your build up and running on Xbox. That could be anywhere from like 10 days to a couple of months, depending on how complex your game is, what sort of problems you hit. The actual APIs are, are relatively straightforward. If you've got experience of doing similar stuff on Steam, um, you can kind of think of it being a similar kind of workload. Um, but obviously you've got restrictions on console you don't have on PC, there's fixed memory budgets and things like that. So you might have stuff that you need to think about when you're doing that port. Um, in terms of revenue, um, I can't honestly remember what's public and what's not. <laughs> I know on the PC, I th it's 8812, um, if you have Xbox Live integration. I can't remember whether our uh, Xbox revenue split is public. Um, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution and say sign up and then we'll tell you. <laughs> We were so close to getting Neil to spilling secrets, but it's good that our time is over now. Thank you everyone for attending and let's thank Neil again for this talk. Thank you. <laughs>